welcome to the pathways into darkness. We start off with a little story from the Pathways in the Darkness book called The Dare. He is not going to do it, said Ben, a short, husky, dark-skinned man in his thirties. Ben was looking at his friend from work, Johnny Drake. A young, twenty-something guy looked back at Ben and other men in the group. All eight men were standing outside the gate that led into the graveyard, which was known to be haunted. The group of friends had been enjoying the night out drinking and wanting to have some fun. This night, they came to a place known to have ghosts and other weird folklore. Not many people would even be this close to the gate of the graveyard at midnight, but the group of friends didn't believe in such ghost stories or folklore. So, are you going to do it, Johnny? asked Ben, grinning his half-drunken friend. Johnny looked around at the group of guys, all smiling at him as if he was the butt of a joke. Why me? asked Johnny. One of the other guys responded, Because you didn't drink as much as, as any of us. So you can reach the tomb better than any of us that just passes midway. The guy laughed and another continued. Oh yeah, that would suck spending the night sleeping in and off in this spooky place. Johnny, shake his head and look to Ben. I don't believe in ghosts or ghouls, but still, I'm not running to grave robbers. Ben laughed. Come on, Johnny. You know no grave robbers will enter this place at night. There are stories of such thieves disappearing once they enter the this purgatory. If you believe in such crap, laughed even more. What are you, chicken? Scaredy cat? You told me a week ago you're not afraid of anything. I dare you to go into the tomb, take a picture of it, and come back to show you are braver than anyone here. Another man from the group named Don said, I double dare you, Johnny. Then another man, no, I double dog dare you, as the group laughed. Ben laid his hand on Johnny's shoulder. I triple dog dare you, scaredy cat. As more laughs came and Johnny started to get mad. He didn't like people laughing at him, even worse, thinking he was a coward. I am not afraid of my shadow guys, not a bit scared. You will see, Johnny responded. See here, pulling out from his pants pocket and holding up his cell phone. I'll take that picture. Hell, I'll take several pictures and show who's the bravest asshole here. Ben walked over to the gate, noticing it was not locked. At first wondering, how odd? Then at Johnny, Ben's mind cleared of any odd thoughts. Here you go, Johnny. The pathway is clear. Opening the gate, which was making an eerie sound as it opened to the graveyard. Johnny first stood there, looking at the path set before him. Shook off any negative fears. He felt that the ghosts were made up to keep people out of the graveyard. All right, then. We'll be back in five. The group of men started to give Johnny a little push, but he started to walk ahead to show he was not scared and walked by Ben smiling. I'll bring you back a little trinket and walked into the graveyard, hearing the gate close behind him. Looking ahead, Johnny walked quickly to get out of sight of his friends. He didn't want them to see. He did feel uneasy here. The place had a haunted look. Tombstones littered the ground, some new, some very old. Further back into the graveyard were the very old graves. That's where the tomb was, the very tomb he had to take pictures of. Johnny breathed in and let out some air as if he were searching for a will to continue. He couldn't go back empty-handed. The young man wanted to prove that he was the bravest of the bunch. Johnny laughed, some thinking he even impressed Emmy, Ben's younger cousin. He reached into his pocket, got a small flashlight that helped shine some of the darkness 
place, but did shine as much as he, but didn't shine as much as he liked. The flashlight gave him a narrow look into the darkness, only showing what was up ahead ten or fifteen feet. Looking around the scene, he could see flowers and statues all around him. The place first seemed normal, although he still had an uneasy feeling. So he fought it down, pushed the fears down in his stomach, and started to walk to where the tomb was. The tomb had a legend about it. The tomb was the resting place of Lady Willow. She used to own half the town, a very cruel but very rich woman. She had poor conditions in her furniture company she owned, cutting regulations and safety procedures. Some say she caused many to get killed or hurt. Looking around, Johnny figured some of these graves were due to her. Oddly, she eventually was buried in the place, still standing over those she didn't care for or was concerned for their safety. Her tomb stood at the far end of the graveyard, a block of stones and steel. The door with glass-colored stained window for her to look out at what was left of her empire. That very thought caused shivers to run down Johnny's back. He continued to walk, shining the flashlight around at every noise, rustle, and shadow movement at the corner of his eye. Looking down at his path, he tried not to step on the graves, not the fear of dead hands reaching up grabbing his feet, but respect of the dead, and in his mind, don't piss off any ghosts, ghostly spirits seeking revenge. Johnny stopped in his tracks, getting his bearings, so he doesn't get lost in the graveyard. Of course, the place was five miles wide and three miles long. The tomb, just under that far, he wanted to quickly get there, take the pictures, and hurry back to drink the night away, proving to all he was not scared of anything. A twig broke to his left. The flashlight pointed in the general area. Johnny's eyes widened. His body got cold. It was a warm summer night, but a cruel, cool breeze flowed across the graveyard, giving a chilling effect, and he heard another twig to his right broke. Johnny had quickly pointed at the source of the noise, grunting himself. It must be a damn animal, a raccoon, or a stupid squirrel, agreeing to himself. Yeah, that's what it is. Night prowlers looking for food, or he then hears another noise behind him. A fear caused his feet to start walking away from the sound. He wanted to get this over with and done. Come on, man. Your imagination is getting away with you. There is nothing out there, Johnny said as his feet got faster and faster to reach the tomb. Johnny felt he was making time when he thought he heard a voice calling him. Johnny, said the creepy voice. His breathing increased as he turned turned around, looking frantically around for the origin of the voice. The voice was not there. Johnny tried his best to push down his fears. <clears throat> he thought maybe it was one of his friends playing a joke on him. Anger grew. Hey, guys, Johnny shouted. That's not fair. Catching a guy off guard? I could have tripped or fallen into a hole. As soon as Johnny said that about a hole, he found his foot stepping on air, as if as he did, fell into a dark hole, slamming him to the ground in pain. Damn it! Johnny shouted in agony. Johnny! He heard the voice again. He lost his grip of the flashlight and quickly reached for it to shine above him. He could not see anything <clears throat> but the edges of the newly dug grave around him. He must have fallen five feet. Luckily for him, he stood six feet and could climb out of this grave. Johnny was about to sit up when he saw a mist-like cloud float over the grave. His eyes locked onto the strange mist as his body froze in time, not moving, hoping that it was just his imagination. The mist seemed to hover over the grave and floated away, showing a cloudless night. The stars above sparkled above him as he lay there for a few minutes. Gathering his courage to sit up and peek over the top of the walls of the grave, 
he could see the, the shovel of the grave digger and a tarp filled with dirt. Sighing, thinking that someone didn't finish the job, his first thought maybe it was grave robbers, but saw no one around him as he scanned the area. So far at the moment, there were no movement. Feeling confident that there no one was there, a real person or a ghost, Johnny got out of the freshly dug grave and got to his feet above. Dusting himself off, Johnny looked around the place and off in the distance where the tomb sat silently alone. He felt a sign of relief that his spooky journey was almost over and the target of this dare was just ahead. The night air felt cool and misty. He could see his breath shaking his head. He could not understand how the temperature dropped in the graveyard as outside of this labyrinth of tombstones the air was humid and hot. Living in the south of Georgia during the summer, cool air like this is always welcome, but tonight he wished it was still hot and humid. Johnny had heard many ghost stories, starting with cold air, and that you can see the fog of your breath. This was a sign of spirits near. Stopping in his tracks, he shook off his fear and reminded himself there were no such thing as ghosts. Just to, just the mind playing games on you. Gathering his sanity, Johnny pressed on toward the tomb of the lady. That was no lady, but a witch of misery. He heard stories of her torturing people that worked for her. One reason many people stayed with her and endured the torture of the mind games she loved to play is that Lady Willow paid very well. Some employees stayed with her for ten years or more. Some leave and live a comfortable life but had looked for more work outside the city due to her influences. Many rejoice her death. He heard parties went up all over the city. Movement to his left caught his attention. Johnny stopped for a second, looking at two silhouettes walking or moving his way. He quickly ducked behind a statue of an angel holding out her hands. He looked around the side of the statue to see what looked like two guys wearing jacket hoodies and blue jeans. Johnny was not sure if there was a couple of his friends trying to scare him or if there were grave robbers here. His heart beat faster thinking maybe gangbangers taking a shortcut. He could see them approaching where he was hiding. He slid back behind the statue of the angel and as the two men walked by Johnny looked on the other side to see where they were going. No one was there. Johnny sat halfway up the statue to get a better look. But again, no one. He could not believe his eyes. It was just a second as they passed his hiding place, and these two guys could not have hidden so quickly. Standing up and looking around, he shined his flashlight in the direction the two men were headed down a small pathway. But to Johnny's shock, there were no sign of him. The tombstones nearby were too small to hide behind, and there were no bushes or trees to duck behind, just the statue he took cover. Not sure what he just saw or thought he saw, Johnny quickly heads towards the tomb. He wanted out of this crazy place. This plantation of death was playing tricks on his mind, and he felt not just fear, but insanity. He didn't believe, but as certain events were happening, Johnny felt fear. He ignored so much emotion and feeling. Fear started to creep in his mind. For the first time, he would admit to such emotions. He always bragged how brave he was and how he was not scared of anything. Even now, he even stood on the edge of a building far up in the sky, facing off and even facing off a bull once. Even fought back a would-be robber trying to take his last dollar. This time it was different. He could not see what was coming at him, or if it was just his mind losing reality. Johnny finally reached the tomb, standing alone among the dead bushes and trees. Tombstones stood twenty feet away from the tomb as it was cursed, a place that even in death 
Lady Willow would torment their internal souls. A chill of fright ran down Johnny's back as he looked over the forsaken place. Looking around him, hoping those two disappearing men didn't suddenly jump him, he fished for his phone to take the pictures of the tomb and make his way back to the gate. He raised his phone and took a few pictures, and then one picture seemed to show something. The door of the tomb was open. Johnny froze as he took another picture as if something was standing in the doorway. His heart beat against his chest as if on instinct he took another picture that made his whole body shiver with fear. His eyes could not believe what he was seeing. It was something he wished he never saw. There on his phone stood the Lady Willow. He looked up at the opening door but nothing was there, nothing but air. He took another picture to see her standing in front of him as if he let out a mortal scream that he never knew he could scream. His fear finally came out and the scream, a scream that sounded like a little boy getting spooked over his own shadow, but this time the shadow was real, a real ghost standing in front of him. Johnny fell backwards as he heard a voice behind him. Run, Johnny. Run, Johnny, now. Getting back on his feet and not daring to take another picture, he ran as fast as he could go, his heart now bursting through his chest. He never felt such fear, never felt very soul running from his very life. He leaped over tombstones and old dying bushes that looked like no one took, ever took care of. And now he knows why. At this very moment, he felt as if the devil or some demon from hell was on the heels of his feet, just within reach. He ran past the statue he hid behind, and then as he jumped another tombstone, he bumped into the very two men that he saw earlier. The crash sent him falling to the ground, knocking the wind out of him. Looking up at the two hooded men, he saw no faces. He reached for his flashlight that he tucked in his back pocket to realize he lost it. The flashlight might have fell out of his pocket in the run or smashed into the two guys looking down at him. A gloved hand reached down to him, to Johnny, to offer to help him up. Johnny took the hand and was lifted off the ground as the two men still not saying anything. Johnny responded to their hand in help. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to run into you. It's just his words cut short as he saw a glimpse of the face of one of the two men. It was a color of bone. The moon was finally shining its fullness above as one of the men looked up and pointed his gloved hand. Johnny could see one of the men's faces. He could have screamed, but his voice choked back. A skull with dark eyes looked up. The other man looked at Johnny from his darkened face and said in a low voice, Johnny, run. Johnny, she is near. Run. Looking past the two ghostly men, he could see a mist floating towards him. He could feel fear and sickening horror rushing up to him. Thank you, Johnny responded. Oddly, he felt safe next to these two men, as if... They let off a light, not the darkness that covered their face. Then, as if the two men were standing in front of him, disappeared before his eyes, and only the mist grew closer and closer to him. Johnny ran as fast as he could. He didn't want to see her again. Her eyes was a pure fire, mist-like body, as if she were engulfed in flames. Her very being made him sick. He could feel her not far behind and dare not to look back, thinking no one would believe him. But he looked down at his hand. He still had his phone. The pictures were proved he was not losing his mind. There were really ghosts, and one was hot on his trail. This ghost was not going to catch him. He felt a ping of hope as he could see streetlights nearing the gate and hearing a group of people talking. Johnny ran as fast as he could go, and the gate was not far. Suddenly, something grabbed his foot, causing Johnny to fall 
to the ground. The pain was sharp, and as he felt that he might have a broken rib, his fear increased as he remembered the Lady Willow was chasing him. He tried to get up, but instead crawled as fast as he could, kicking up dirt as he started shouting for his friends, Help! Help me! Ben! Help me! Without warning, he felt something pull him, like a hand took one of his feet and started to pull him back into the graveyard. Johnny screamed like he never screamed before. His fingers dug into the ground as he continued to cry out for help. Johnny felt his pleas of help falling on deaf ears and that no one to bother or even brave enough to get into the graveyard to save him. Johnny struggled to dig into the ground and not be pulled back to her tomb. He felt the grip of his feet let go and he crawled back and looked at what had grabbed him. Her face, as if on fire, snarled at him, sending an electricity of horror through his body. He screamed loud and childlike as if she jumped into his body. He fought back, shouting, No! No! He felt something. Many hands grabbed him, and in his mind, the dead of the graveyard or the servants of Lady Willow, tortured, were helping her to drag him back into the place he wished he never entered or even dared to enter. Johnny saw shadows of men over him, grabbing him, and seemed to be shouting to him. He continued to scream in fear and call out his friend Ben. Johnny looked closely at one of these attackers to then notice it was Ben and his friends, plus cops and firemen. His mind confused. He stopped struggling as if he felt so exhausted. His body burned with muscles so tight, so intense with fear. Johnny looked up seeing the face of Ben holding his head in Ben's arms. Johnny never felt so happy to see his friend, then started to cry, feeling so afraid. He would never brag about being brave than anyone. His first thought was back, telling Ben he was braver than God himself. Maybe this was why he encountered the ghost, and he felt it was due to the dare he knew deep inside he could not keep. Ben held his friend as paramedics came to put Johnny on a gurney to rush him to the hospital. Ben looked worried as he said, Dude, where were you? You've been gone for hours. It's almost morning. We went looking for you. Call the cops to help. Oh my God, man. We thought we lost you to the curse of this place. Ben stood there in disbelief as the paramedics took Johnny into the ambulance and hurried him away. He looked down to see Johnny's phone, picking it up, curious. Ben went to the photo app and started looking at the pictures, not sure what he, he was seeing. He saw the last picture, and his eyes widened. And then, without warning, a female voice whispered in his ear, Ben! Dropping the phone and let out a little scream, he looked around in the graveyard as the sun started to rise and let the sky filled with light. He felt fear as he dared not to think about as he stomped Johnny's phone, crushing it with very, with a few hard stomps. He then backs out of the place that almost took his friend. And as he turned to exit the graveyard, he heard a voice again that made him run past everyone and down the road, never looking back. The voice said, Run, Ben. Run, Ben. And there is the story of the dare. Of many other stories in the pathways of the darkness. Beware what lies on such paths. This is Leonard Rich, writer, author, photographer of many other horror books and sci-fi horror. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>